Hello, wonderful people. I do pray that you are having a great day. I wanted to share with you an awesome experience I had earlier today. I had to go to the doctor, to the girl doctor. And as I went to sit in the lobby, I heard a voice from my left say, Miss Tate. And so I look and it is a young lady that I used to mentor years ago, years ago. And now she's 28 years old, for show grown in the same doctor's office as me they grow up my god so we're catching up and she's telling me about what's going on in her life and she says miss tate miss tate guess what i said what she said i'm doing the same thing you used to do with us i said okay so what is it that you're doing and she said i'm mentoring teenage girls and i work with youth and i said now that's awesome because y'all this one right here used to give me Ooh, Shamata, the blues, okay? And so I started with her as a mentor, maybe in the sixth or seventh grade, and we stay connected through, I wanna say the 10th or 11th grade, and then she went to another high school and we lost touch. So I'm like, okay, well, this is cool. I'm like, that is awesome. She said, and you know what, Miss Tate, so many people tried to tell me I shouldn't do this. She said, and I've been doing it for about three years and I love it. I said, well, that's great. I said, well, why would they tell you not to do it? She said, because people were like, you're too young, you're close to them in age and they're not going to listen to you and what can you tell them and you don't have kids that age and and she said but miss tate they listen to me i said now baby that's what it's all about are you getting results are you happy are you impacting lives she said yeah she said and i have to interact with their parents and their parents receive from me too i said okay well that's that's all that matters you're changing lives and you love what you do she said yeah she said but miss tate why people do that why they tell you not to do something that you're good at? She said, and maybe naturally good at, right? I said, right. She said, and then I remembered something you said, Miss Tate. And I said, well, honey, Miss Tate said a lot of stuff. So what did Miss Tate say? <laughs> She said, I remember you saying, you don't listen to our music. You don't talk like us. You don't do our dances. You don't dress like us. But God had anointed you to work with young people. I said, Wow. I did say that and I said and I still say that and so I encouraged her and prayed with her and just put a spell blessings over her life and as I was leaving and driving down the street and throughout the day I started thinking about how many times people tell people what they should or should not be doing because they don't have the experience because they failed at this or because it didn't work for them but God that experience is a part of what anoints them and above all else God has chosen and anointed them for that purpose so why like the baby said why do people do that and guess what I have been guilty of that early on I remember some time ago years ago me even being guilty of telling people maybe or not necessarily directly to them but just kind of making statements about what people should or should not be doing because they don't have the life experience or they're this or they're that or don't take advice from this person because this or because of that but if they're anointed and if they're getting results and if they are changing lives and if they have the testimony of other people about how their wisdom was a blessing to them, who are we? Them being in the place of operating in their call and under their anointing. Long before I went to school for a doctorate in theology, I was preaching the gospel. I was ministering the gospel across the country. And I believe having great impact and people have certainly uh, encouraged me in that. I always say it wasn't the degrees that gave me the anointing. The anointing to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to minister the word of God, to prophetically go forth and teach and train and equip and, and call people into their destiny and encourage people in walking in it, whatever that destiny is. That came from God. It has nothing to do with books. Nothing nothing, nothing wrong with books. I want to encourage you. If God has required you to get training or additional training or education, go for it. But anointing will surpass life experience, degree, because God has called you. As I drove along, I started thinking about how David. David was a shepherd and even the prophet wasn't paying attention to David. 
His daddy didn't even think about David being the potential king that the prophet was looking for because he was a shepherd. Be careful of, a, of people putting you in their own little box, telling you what you should or should not be doing because you're not equipped for that. You haven't had that life experience. You failed at this. What about Colonel Sanders who failed at business? Thomas Edison, how many times did he try to create electricity? If he would have listened to people, Henry Ford, Ross Perot, EDS, failed businesses. Hey, let's bring it right here. Let's bring it right here. Bill Gates. What if somebody said, Bill, you didn't finish your degree. You, you can't start no company called Microsoft. Stay in that garage. All of these people who people from biblical uh, persons to regular old folks that years later, hundreds of years later, we're still using what they're creating. We still going to KFC. Amen. We're still driving Henry Ford cars. We're still using Microsoft. But because of their failures, because of what people deemed as failure, and even maybe them, maybe even them, they fell forward and they got up and they learned from it. And then they were able to use what they learned to be a blessing to others. People have said to me, you know, wow, how God uses you to coaching relationships and, and coaching marriage and before you say I do and, and after you say I do. And some would say, well, you can't do that because you haven't been married yet or you can't do that because you're not in a long-term relationship. Why? Who says I can't? If God anoints me and he has and I see results and I have testimonies and I do, who is anyone to tell me or you what you should or should not be doing. Listen, I want to charge you. Be the best you you can be because there's not going to be another one. Live out your hyphen. My hyphen started in 1967 and it's going to end whenever God calls me home to glory. Do not allow anybody to tell you what you should or should not be doing. You need to make your calling and election sure before God, not before man. They're not your assignment and you're not theirs. And let me say this to those of us who have been guilty. And may I say, if in my immature years, because immaturity has nothing to do with age, nor does it have to do how long you've been saved. Because I've seen people and had people in my life who have said, Tuesday, go for it. And I've t seen them tell other people, go for it. Fulfill your life. Use your gifts. You're anointed for that. You can do this. You can do that. Try it. And somewhere along the line, they jumped off the track. They got on another street and now they don't think like that anymore, at least not about you. But you cannot listen to naysayers. We know the saying, let your haters be your elevators. <laughs> but sometimes everybody's just not hating. I, I don't know what it is that they're experiencing. But you must be convinced of what God has called and elected and anointed you to do for his glory. Like my baby said, what if I would have listened to them? I love what I do and I'm getting results. I'm seeing young people change. They listen to me. I'm impacting lives. If that's your testimony, you stay the course. But back to us, back to us who have been guilty and are guilty of saying things, blanket statements, posting things. If that's your opinion, speak for yourself, not for the rest of the world, because there is someone assigned to that person. And you are discouraging maybe somebody who they believe God has told me to work with them. But I'm listening. I know what you're saying. How are you going to tell somebody how to be a millionaire and you're not a millionaire yet? But can they tell you how to manage your money? How to be a good balancer of your money? A good budgeter? Can they give you the strategies? Listen, anything that anyone is telling you to do that's from the word of God and it works, even in, in marriage uh, coaching and relationship coaching, I don't give them my opinion. I give them the word. I, it's their life experience and they apply the word to their life. You want to be a millionaire and you're going to somebody who's still at six figures, but they're telling you how to become a millionaire. You might want to listen to them if they take using the scripture. I have a, a, a person I used to be in, in very close relationship with. I remember they said their, their million dollar business failed, but yet they were still teaching and preaching on how to be a millionaire. 
who who's gonna tell them no listen let me ask you a question who tells the single pastor don't you teach and preach uh, and counsel anybody on on how to have a healthy marriage because you're single do they tell the priest that who will never get married? Do they tell the psychiatrist, the psychologist, the therapist who's not married? No, 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 no. You can't be a marriage counselor. You can't counsel on these things. The the person who operates and, and counsel is a therapist in drug addiction, but they've never used drugs. But God has anointed them to know how to reach the heart of people. When T.D. Jakes started Woman Dollar Loose, he's a man. Unheard of. A man having a woman's conference. And he started that in the backwoods. And now it's 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 on the platform with reaching thousands and thousands upon tens of thousands of women. I just want us to be careful. Without knowing it, you are squashing someone else's dream. You are quenching their fire. You are stepping into their anointing. And woe to us, to any of us, when we have done that. I don't care if you've been in the kingdom 50 years, 60 years, 5 days, 5 weeks, 5 months, 5 years. It doesn't matter. Let's be careful about saying what someone should or should not be doing. You don't know how they cry out to God and how they pray and seek God. You don't know how they're studying and the downloads and strategies and wisdoms and nuggets that God gives them. Ultimately, if they're being used, give praise to God. Because someone is, is getting out of debt. Someone is getting their, their life focused on wealth so that they can be a blessing to the kingdom. Someone's child is becoming obedient and wanting to go to school. Someone's marriage is being saved. Some single woman is no longer stumbling in relationships. Some single man has decided it's better for me to be married and to stay married. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let's just praise God. Praise God when God is using his vessels. It's the church that does this mess. I don't see the world telling anybody what they should or should not be doing. They might be doing it. But if they see them doing it and they get results, come on now. Who, who, who? We have to be careful as the church. Particularly, we are believers. We are people of faith. We know God can do whatever he wants, however he wants, and use whomever he wants. So why do we do that? Be encouraged, beloved. If God is using you for his glory and he has anointed you and you are getting results and lives are being changed and impacted, you stay the course. You keep your hand on the plow and you be encouraged. Get around people who believe in you and you believe in each other and you continue to encourage each other. And again, those of us, those of you who are discouraging people with or without knowing it. And just because you get all them amens and likes, that don't mean it's right. That don't mean it's right. And I just encourage us not to quench people's fires. Don't, don't, don't pour water on their fires and their dreams. Because somebody's looking at you. Because of your maturity, of your place. And they're listening to you. And other people are listening to you. And then they're going back telling somebody, be careful. Be careful. And see, this, this ain't typically men. This, this typically us women. I mean, men ain't normally messy other than Trump. It's us tweeting and Instagramming and facing full of stuff, saying stuff about what people wanting to limit people. It's normally us. So that's why uniting women, igniting women to set us ablaze together in a spirit of unity. We are all God's workmanship. We are all his handmaidens coming together to do the work of the kingdom. My God, if we started working together, the devil is alive. Women can work together and not be haters and not be like crabs in a barrel and so can black folk and people in general. I just believe it, particularly in the church. And so today is Tuesdays with Tuesday and this is my thought and encouragement of the day. You be encouraged. You be encouraged. Live out your hyphen. And do all that God has placed you in the earth to do. And if it fails, it fails. At least you fail forward, right? And you said you tried. There's so many people that will never try. Because they don't even want to fail. And then the whole other group that's afraid of the success that will come if they try. So you be encouraged. And to all the rest of us, let's just be mindful of our words. And encourage one another. As long as today is called today, the Bible says to encourage one another. Our opinions really don't matter. They really don't. What matters is the word of God and all things are possible with God for them, for you, 
and for us. I love you with the love of the Lord. You have a blessed day. See you soon. God bless.